So, and the, you've, you've alluded to this uh, just a little while ago. You said there came a time when all of the upper-level management of Scientology was basically holed up in two double-wide trailers out at near Hemet, California, at the California headquarters. Right. Can you tell us, how did that come to be? And tell us a little bit about the environment in that scenario and how you got put into there. Okay, by, I told you that there was a deteriorating scene with Miscavige. It, you know, you could peg different points to it. I actually peg it all the way back to 1990 when he got rid of his last rival. Because ultimately, his rise to power, he had to take out a number of people who were senior to him. And they were all coups, some of which I participated in, some of which I witnessed secondhand or firsthand. Okay? Culminating with Pat Broker. And once, apparently, he got, you know, the prize in the ring and had no more rival to, to talk over, I mean, it happens to be the date coincident with when the stats slide for 26, you know. And, and Pat Broker is a is a, a trusted confidant of L. Ron Hubbard, right? I don't know how trusted he was at the end, mm-hmm. but fact of the matter is he appointed him to be a higher rank within the C organization than Dave, you know, shortly before he died. Okay. Okay. All right. So where were we? So uh, you, um, David, Miss, we're... He's, uh, I guess it's around 2004, the SP Hall. Or right, right. You said, where did, how did it begin? And I'm saying, it got, I guess it began in 1990, but in more modern times, 99 was that other big point where all of a sudden he's going to get pulled into this case that he's trying to manipulate from behind the scenes and see Bernie and do all these things, and all of a sudden he's getting sucked into the case. That was a huge point where he had a kind of, like, a, you know, he, he, he started, his behavior started getting much more erratic. The Lisa McPherson case. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, by by uh, serendipity, I, for a year and a half, I was sort of off of his lines because I went off to go handle Tom Cruise and the Celebrity Center and a whole other thing in 2002 area, and then I got pulled back into Clearwater. So I miss I'm I'm missing gaps, but suffice it to say, by the time I got back at the base, in base, from Clearwater actually in late 2003. It was unrecognizable. I mean, there was no form of organization. It was a big hey you deal. Uh, nobody was, none of international management was allowed to send any international management was allowed to send any telexes out or communications, electronic or, or hard copy or any other way. And it was sort of this weird statistic game that Miscavige had going on down there. He would go in there and he would tell them to go work on the org board. Work, we, need a, we need an org board. The organizational board would be like an organizational chart in a corporation, for right. example. Okay. Right. We need to sort it all out. And then he'd go, you guys all, and it was you know, completely off Hubbard policy. Hubbard policy, you, know, you, you assign something to somebody and they do it. You know. He su- signs them all. So they all got to be in this room, right, which is a double wide it's a it's a office for international management, and it's basically a couple of double wides, you know, married up together, okay. and it's got you know indoor outdoor carpet and some you know cheap furniture, but workable furniture for office cubby holes and stuff. But there's no work going on because what happens is he says get the work board done, and then maybe six days later, and you're not allowed to go anywhere until it's done. If I see any of you guys walking around the base, you've had it, right? So how many people are in there? 40, 40, 50, something like that. And these are all higher level managers in Scientology. Right. And there's, what is there in that, that double wide contained in there? Offices, conference rooms, what? There's a big, it's centered, not centered, but there's a big conference room with about a 40 foot, 30 foot, 40 foot table. I mean, it's huge. And, uh, and then there's, um, cubby hole, you know, spaces for like three individual managers, and you know, each cubby hole or each cubby, what do you call those spaces? There's a number of those that sort of surround the, the table, and then there's a separate office for the COCMO, WDC chairman, the highest officers of Church Scientology International. And then there's a bunch of other administrative offices that swing off, and then there's another trailer that goes off, and there's you know other administrative offices. But that's the central place, you know, the big wide open space with the big table and the cubby holes around it. Um, so Miscavige keeps people there and tells them to work something out, and then he, maybe he'll come back six days later and goes, well, let's see this thing now. And then he'll look at it and go, and he'll jump on one immediate thing that sticks in his craw, 
And he'll ask, who was the one who proposed this particular thing? And everybody's kind of looking at each other, like, you know, maybe they point to somebody. And then he starts throwing stuff at the guy and screaming and calling him a suppressive person and a, you know, an enemy. And you're trying to sabotage all of Scientology. And, you know, he'll start throwing things across the room and just having a temper tantrum. And this might go on, Tom, for two, three hours regularly. And then by the end of it, everybody's confused. They don't know what to do. And they're now all told that they need to gang up on this guy and purge the suppressive or some wild thing that has no resolution. It's just a mind game. And then he leaves. And I want the postings done by tomorrow, right? <laughs> well, you can't do the postings without the org board. So everybody's stuck in a conundrum. Tom, you think I'm kidding. This is the way things went on. I was there for like through October, November, December. It was nuts and it deteriorated. All the while, all the while, he's saying he's, he keeps busting people off their posts and go, sending them out to this other property we have to do an informal sort of holding period. They're out working in fields, and um, I don't know what they're doing, but there's like 100 people that are in limbo that I'm supposed to figure out how to get rid of, meaning offload. So this insanity is going on. Nothing's getting done. This is the last three months leading up to January where they where he literally created this what's been termed as the SP Hall which I think is a great you know description of of what it was what does SP stand for suppressive person okay and so the, the hall was full of suppressive persons in Mr. Mr. Miscavige's mind right but it was all it was all of international management nobody was exempted and it's 40 or so people yeah something like that 40 50 something like that and you said earlier they could not leave uh, well, it got to a point where I was, I think it was mid-January, he said, okay, that's it, you're all staying here. Until the org board's done, the postings are done, the finance system's done, all these things that he won't ever let get done. They got to get them all done, and nobody's leaving. You can sleep under the desks, you can have your food brought up to you, you can have a shower in the morning if you run, you can run off to a place on the property, you can get a shower, and otherwise, you're here 24-7. And that's what was done. And literally all the people, uh, you know, they rolled out a sleeping bag or, you know, slept on the carpet and in their clothes with a jacket over them or whatever. I mean, they were allowed to have pillows. And, uh, and they lived there for a couple of weeks. Now, it, this went on for years, but I only witnessed the, the inception of it because there's only so much... As Popeye says, there's only so much I can take, and I can't take no more. I mean, I la he put me in there, and I lasted four days. And that was it. Because I, I saw him ruining people. I mean, literally making people think that they're suppressive, and while he's suppressing them, and then becoming completely ineffective, and just spun in and incapable of doing anything. And I think that's why Tom left. I think that's why Mike left. I think that's why a number of people left. Who, who could only take so much, they weren't going to become that, what he was making people into. So, uh, you get put in there. Why did you get put in there? Because I back, I back talked to him um, on a couple of scores. One, I had come back from Clearwater, and he'd give me a t grand tour of his $75 million office building that he had Tom DeVock build for him. And he took me through the whole place with he and his wife's assistant, Shelly. And he took me through and wound up the tour in the IG wing, which was a tremendous office. IG, what does that stand for? Inspector General. And you're the Inspector General. Right? Yeah, well, I guess so. Because what happened was when I went off to handle Tom Cruise in 2001, it was like, you're not the Inspector General. But there was never an issue. I was never had a community of evidence. It was just, like I said, it's a big hey you deal. You never know what your status is. But I walk in there, and he shows me the whole thing, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, this is bizarre. I mean, this is like, I mean, if L. Ron Hubbard saw something like that, that kind of waste and extravagance, I mean. This building is on in the compound in the desert? It makes the flag place, you know, with the imported Madrid carpets and the top marble Italian tiles, look like trailer trash. I mean, this place has got imported sandstone walls. It's got metal walls with the imprints of Dianetic trademarks on them and Scientology trademarks. It's got etched glass windows, 40-foot ceilings with these intricate um, uh, stained glass pattern, you know, I mean, imported tiles from Italy. 
It's just way beyond and beyond. And nobody can go in there except for him and his staff. I mean, it's, 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 it's big enough. It's 55,000 square feet. It's big enough for like 300 people. And the only people that are in there is him and his personal staff, like six people. Because everybody, because now he's, by this point in the game, everybody's suppressive, including RTC. Well, he tried to bring me, he, he brings me up there, takes me through the place. I look at the whole place. I'm utterly unimpressed. He takes me into this office, and I'm looking at it like, it's like John Thane's office, you know, the, the Merrill Lynch guy. Who just you know for the you know the seven hundred fifty you know seventy five thousand dollar trash cans and all that stuff, that stuff doesn't turn me on. It particularly doesn't turn me on when I know it's parishioners' money that's paying for this stuff, and it particularly particularly doesn't turn me on when I know L. Ron Hubbard would roll over in his grave if he saw somebody being that extravagant. So I'm not dancing, you know, I'm not break dancing or I'm not doing the moonwalk over this, and he flips out. Look at this guy, he's suppressive. Shelly, look at this guy. He's not even impressed. You know, I worked, you know, blah, 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 blah. He goes into one of his temper tantrums. That was the first part. The second part was uh, he wanted Tom Cruise to go get services at, uh, up at Int. <laughs> okay, that long happen. story. That's another long story, but the bottom line is this. He wants Tom Cruise to be in it so he can get his talons into him and make him his little, his little uh, best friend and confidant and I don't know, suck the life out of him, because that's basically what I've seen him do. But my perspective was I spent a year and a half, two years getting the guy back on lines, and I'm thinking, Tom's now going to go down to Clearwater and participate like every other Scientologist. And to me, that was the end phenomena of me doing a repair. You know, I told you I went and did repairs, fixed up things that nobody else could handle. I thought, and when I said that, oh, my God, I think that was the second time he took a swing at me and hurt his hand. This is in the in the big. And when I said I said, he said, Tom Cruise is going to come up here, and I said, well, he should be at Flag. And then he flipped out and said, Charlie, look at this guy, only person in the world who will back 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 flash me, only person in the world who will talk back at me. The IRS won't talk back at me, but this guy will talk back at me. Long story short, next thing I know, I get called down to SP Hall.